Hi there, this is Mr. Alexander, and uh, this video is for being recorded over the lesson in Pre-AP Algebra 2, which took place on August the 27th and August the 28th. Uh, I'm going to try and record a video for each lesson that we do, uh, so come on back and watch these videos for some extra help. Gen generally what I'll do is try to keep these videos to 5 to 10 minutes so that you can get some idea of what happened in class if you're absent or if you need a little bit of extra help. So let's jump right into it. Uh, I'm looking at a problem here. Ricky has some fish in his refrigerator. Each week he eats the same amount of fish. And here's the table. We've got number of weeks, we've got number of fish left. It starts at zero weeks, goes up to four. He starts with 46 fish and he goes down to 14. And it says find the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is easy to find because that's where x equals 0. And so I'm looking at the table here at that starting point. Uh, the y-intercept is that coordinate right there, 0, 46, because that is where uh, x equals 0. Now the y-intercept should always be written as a coordinate point. Don't just write 46, write 0, comma 46. What does it represent in the context of the story? Well, that's just the number of fish he started with number of fish Ricky started with. Alright, so next thing we're supposed to do is find the slope. And slope, remember, is change in y over the change in x. Delta y, delta x. Remember that delta symbol just means change. Uh, so I'm looking at these y's here and it looks like they're all going down by 8. So that delta y is negative 8. The change in x, it's going up by 1 every time, right? Up by 1. So the change in y, or sorry, the change in x is just 1. So the slope then is just negative 8. What does this represent in the context of the story? Well, that's how many fish are going away or being eaten every week. So that's just the number of fish eaten per week. Well if we have a slope and we have a y-intercept we sure can write an equation. Remember to write an equation that's linear we usually use the form y equals mx plus b. And in this case we have a slope m and a b, a y-intercept, so we can write the equation y equals our slope, which is negative 8, x plus 46. All right, so that's how to write an equation from a table. Let me flip over here. Let's talk about some inequalities. And graphing inequalities is, it can be tough. Uh, sometimes they're tricky just because they're not always straight lines. Or they're always straight lines, but they're not always solid lines. Although, I just want to start here. Uh, you should always, always, always try and get the y by itself. And in this case, I think the easiest way to do that is to subtract 3x from both sides. And that would leave me with negative y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 5. Now, that y is not by itself because we have a negative in front of it. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And then ultimately that leaves me with y and positive 3x and negative 5. What happens to this inequality when you multiply or divide by a negative? Well, it flips. So this is actually y is less than or equal to 3x minus 5. Uh, now we can graph it. And I always start at the y-intercept of negative 5. I put a big dot right there. And that 3x, that's our slope. The 3 is the slope, which means we go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. I'm just going to do that a few times. Up 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1. And then I'm going to try and draw in a straight line. But the question is, is it a solid line or a dashed line? In this case, it's a solid line, and it's because it's less than or equal to. If it was just less than, it'd be a dashed line. 
but since it's less than or equal to, we're going to draw in a straight solid line. Now, do I shade it above or below that solid line? Well, since it's y is less than or equal to, I'm going to shade below this solid line. And that's how you graph an inequality. Well, let's do one more like that. I'm looking at number 6 here. This x plus 2y is less than negative 2. Again, we want it in slope-intercept form. We want to get the y by itself. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides of the inequality. And that gives me 2y is less than negative x minus 2. Well, I want to get rid of that 2 in front of the y, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. And in front of that x there is a negative 1. The 1's invisible. But it's there. And so I'm just going to rewrite this as y is less than. I don't need to flip the sign because I did not divide by a negative. I just divided. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 over 2 x. See how I took the 1 and divided by 2, and then I just moved the x out. That's OK. And then 2 divided by 2 is simply 1, so that'll be minus 1. And I'm going to graph this. I'm going to start with the y-intercept of negative 1. I'm going to put a big dot right there at negative 1. And then this is negative 1 divided by 2. That means I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, rise over run, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And I kind of want to go the other way too, so I'm going to continue the pattern. I'm going to go up one, left two, up one, left two, up one, left two. And I'm going to draw in the line. But is it solid or dotted? Since it's not less than or equal to, it's just less than. This is a dotted line. Or a dashed line, if you prefer. Dash is probably the right word. And it's less than, so we shade in below. And that's the gist of graphing inequalities, linear inequalities, that is. The last thing I want to talk about are linear word problems. And I'm just going to pick one at random here. I like this one, uh, the savings account. And so let's talk about the savings account problem. Paul opens a savings account with $350. He saves $150 per month. Assume that he does not withdraw money or make any additional deposits. Write a linear model. That word model simply means equation. Write a linear model that represents the total amount of money Paul deposits into his account after m months. So we're still going to use the form y equals mx plus b. The m, the slope, is the amount that is changing per month. In this case, he's saving $150 per month. So his savings account is going to increase by $150 per month, or 150M. The <clears throat> starting point, the B, is $350. So it's increasing $150 per month, and it started at $350. So that's our model. That's our equation. So in part B here, after how many months will Paul have more than $2,000? All right, so that's the y portion. So this is where we can do some fancy algebra. We can say, all right, so at $2,000, how many months will it take to get there? Hmm. So we need to solve this for m. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 350 from both sides. So 2,000 minus 350. That's 1650 equals 150m. Now, to get the m by itself, we divide both sides by 150. So m equals 1650 divided by 150, which is, let's see, that would make it. Eleven months. But be careful with what the question's asking you because it says, after how many months will Paul have more than two thousand dollars? So we know that he'll have two thousand dollars in eleven months. So he'll have more than uh, two thousand dollars 
in more than 11 months. So you could write more than 11 months or 12 months, whichever you prefer. And that's it. That's what we covered in class on the 27th and 28th of August. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.